Let's have a quick analysis of this transport from the Force X250. So you can see it's a two motor system. This one's for the capstan, this motor here is for the reels. So basically that one's turning a flywheel, which is turning this capstan here. And when this uh, magnetic head assembly is raised along with the pinch roller, then the pinch roller will push against that capstan. I'll pinch the tape and pull it in this kind of clockwise direction from the supply reel to the take-up reel here. Oh, I beg your pardon, I got... That's the capstan motor and that's the reel motor. Uh, this reel motor is via this belt here. I'm turning this, which is... We'll maybe talk about that a bit more once uh, this thrust plate and this flywheel is removed, but you can see that there's a wheel with a rubber idler tire on it, which is turning this rated edge below these reel tables. So that's responsible for fast forward, rewind, and also for making sure that the slack tape that's being passed by the pinch roller and the capstan, there's tension between this point and here, because if there isn't, then the tape will accumulate here and get chewed around the, the pinch roller. We've got two solenoids. Looks like this one here raises and lowers the magnetic head assembly and the pinch roller and this one again I'll make it clear in a bit but I think that's controlling whether this idler is in contact with this reel or this reel. This belt as so long as the main capstan belt is out of the way can just be Mm, nah, you really need to take that flywheel out first to get that there, but that hooks over there. I'll stop the filming just now and I'll re after I've removed this thrust plate, it looks like the connections are one, two, three screws. So not the kind of thing you're going to be able to change without completely removing the cassette transport. I've removed that thrust plate now and um, we've got a larger narrow ferrule screw going into this post here and then at the side smaller so I'm using a, a larger and a smaller Phillips head screwdriver respectively to remove those. Having pulled out the flywheel and I don't see any washers or any mechanism on the far side of the capstan to hold it in place it's just held in place this little uh, plastic thrust ducat pushing onto the pin there gives me a bit more access to the solenoids. This one you can see is to do with pause. Whether the pinch roller is going to make contact with the capstan or not. You can see here that this plastic disc in the back of the take up reel, I'm assuming this is the case because I know that some optical tremolo units work this way, but basically there's an LED one side and a, a light sensitive resistor here and so those fluctuations of light dark light dark light dark are going to send information to the digital counter um, in order to access this idler wheel it looks like i need to take off this e-clip on the pulley that's transferring the energy from the real motor to the idler wheel and also another e-clip here and then that'll allow me to remove this arm and have a look at that as far as the pinch roller goes, it's attached to this um, solenoid controlled assembly here, just via this spring. I think the only thing that I can see that's holding that in place is um, an e-clip tucked in there, and that's uh, attaching this to that post. And there, I assume I would be able to use, I don't know if you can see that in this picture, but there's a the pin through the centre of that pinch roller is protruding there, so I could use um, just a pair of pliers to push that through and remove that. That looks like it's got the same brass core that is in the centre of the pinch roller from a Tascam 244. So I could use the same method that I've used in another video where I take rubber from a generic pinch roller and use it to replace the rubber on this one. Actually, although it's a bit shiny, um, this pitch roll is okay for a bit. I'll find out from the client whether he wants to pay for me to do that or not. As far as uh, fast forward and rewind work, it seems to be somewhat dependent on whether this solenoid is raised or lowered. If that is 
not active, then you can see that no matter which way this motor rotates, turning this pulley, that wheel isn't going to touch either the supply or the take up wheel. Whereas if this is active like that, if it turns in that direction, you can see it's definitely spinning that reel, whereas if it turns in the opposite direction, just to do with the shape of these arms and that spring, then it will come into contact with that one and turn that one. So there we have rewind, fast forward, and it'll also be doing that in playback mode. And I suppose that the combination of these two solenoids, the information being sent from the control system, depending on the buttons you press, will give you that range of behavior from these mechanisms. So I'll demonstrate the removal of these E-clips. It's something I've done in other videos when I've been uh, disassembling parts of a 244 transport, for instance. Uh, what you'll find is that these can ping away. If they do, if you lose this, you're going to crack in between your floorboards or you just can't find it on your carpet or whatever. Um, good thing to have is a mixed selection of E-clips. They're sometimes called C-clips. And you can get like a little component box with loads of different sizes in it for about five great British pounds and off UK, eBay or Amazon. But what I tend to find is there's um, two little spaces here. If I place like tweezers into one side of this opening and then pinch with pliers and kind of keep my finger there to stop it pinging away too much, then it'll come off that way. Like that. And that'll lift off. Exposing this one, same idea. Yeah, that one pinged, so. Um, and it looks like these washers were on. Well, there's the other one, but there's washers on either side of this, so don't imagine it would cease to work if you didn't replace those, but be aware that they're there. And um, this is going to be blurry because I'm in manual focus, but hopefully you can see why that's called an E-clip or a C-clip. It looks a bit like a C or a bit like a Euro sign or something. And that will lift off there. Although it's not completely deteriorated, it is a bit shiny and smooth feeling this. So I think that's probably why the fast forward and rewind wasn't working well. It's not really gripping up against the serrated edge of the far side of these reel tables. In fact, I can actually feel a couple of sticky bits there, so it's leaving kind of black marks on my fingers. So yeah, that definitely needs to be replaced. It looks like this can further be disassembled by uh, removing a little plastic clip there, but I'm gonna assume for the meantime that I can just fit a replacement on there without doing too much to it. Remove the pinch roller on this 250 transport. So I'll detach that spring that's holding it up. There's a E-clip in there. A little bit awkward to get at this one. Um, I'm using a soldering tool to hold one corner in place. And I'm trying to get the sharp tips of this. I know the lighting is not very good, but the sharp tips of this pair of tweezers into the little spaces in the E-clip. Okay, so that's come off. I'm not exactly sure where it pinged to. And that comes out like that. Yeah, there's the E-clip there. So you have a piece of fabric or a piece of newspaper or something down in order to catch that. You can see that the, uh, what would we call that, the axle on there is protruding at one side. Probably if I press in it with this and it's going to come out that side. I'm basing this on having worked with this kind of thing on a 244. Usually there's, it's more willing to come out one way than the other. Doesn't seem to want to come that way. Okay, I think that's starting to go now. Push that through a bit more. Oh, if I can get, yeah, get a grip in there and then pull that out. So yeah, I'm just using this uh, desoldering tool. And then let's push the pin out. Um, it's not a terrible condition, the pinch roller. It's a bit smooth in the middle there. Um, but I've checked with the client and he's good for me to get the fresh rubber off of a uh, cheaper pinch roller and place it on this original brass core. So I'll do that. Um, the, the details of how I'm going to be doing that are in another video where I do the same process on a Scan 244. So I don't see the point in filming it again, but check out that video if you want to know what I'm about to do.
quickly talk about the size of the rubber parts that are in that transport in case you want to source them for yourself. So the capstan belt is about 175 millimetres approximately in its folded length. And it's approximately 5 millimetres wide. Look for a neoprene belt. It'll be listed for hi-fi, turntable, that kind of thing. The control belt, I'm using a 50 millimetre diameter by 2 millimetre cross section O-ring um, made from neoprene. But if you're going to go for a round section or square section belt, then a folded length of about 100 millimetre would work. And then the idler tyre, so far as I can make out, it's about 1.5 millimetre wide. The internal diameter is about 13.5 millimetres and the external diameter, assuming that that's about 2 millimetres deep, is about 17 millimetres. This is the more important dimension here because if the ring, as it were, was wider then it wouldn't matter too much because there's quite a lot of space between the two uh, reel tables. So you could have a wider tyre and probably work okay so long as that internal dimension is correct.